Hi guys, today I'm bringing you another unboxing, this time of a Ripper Dactyl Riders unit from Seraphon Army of the a Warhammer's Age of Sigmar. Um, I'm not going to do the painting just yet for the Star Priest because I'm going to include these guys in the priming and the painting as well because I'd like to get my stuff done in a bit of batches. Uh, Florida tends to have temperamental conditions for priming. It could come out real dusty. It could come out real chunky. So you have to really wait for the humidity, humidity to be good and the temperature to be good. <laughs> so I try to get it all done on one day rather than like, okay, is today going to be the day that I can prime? Oh, oh no, no, there's like 95% humidity. It feels like 130 out. So I'm going to wait to do the painting once I get them all primed together and not wasting primer. So we're going to bring you the Ripper Dactyls. Now, you can either make a Pterodon Riders unit or a so Pterodon Riders unit or a Ripper Dactyl unit. And I actually have two boxes of these guys. And I'm going to do both because they're both really cool looking units. I love the Pteranodon looking uh, Pterodon Riders. And the Ripper Dactyls is very ferocious looking and very cool. So those were new to me because I actually, when I got this, I'm thinking, oh, they just all, all I have is Pterodactyls. But with a... Uh, I think with the new stuff, the river dactyls are relatively new. So we're going to follow a little bit different steps. So we're going to follow 12 through 22. And now this one, I will be using the book. And that is because there are lots of pieces to this. So I'm going to keep this book off to the side over here. And I'll be referencing it as much as I can. I might skip steps here or two, but I'll be looking at it. So you guys know I'll be working on it. So with anything, we're going to start, let's see, this is going to start off with the Ripper Dactyl Alpha. So we're going to start with 10. So I'm using, oh man, I think it's got Prime somehow. That's not good. It's still good. A little frosty, a little dusty. All right. So again, using the clippers. Oh right, yeah. These uh, forceps, I think, is what they're called. These came from Hobby Lobby. Um, they're really nifty because, you know, the, it's, it's, normally like you, you pinch something, it closes on it. This pinches itself, so you, now you force it to open, and then it uses his own like spring back power to hold something, which is this one's real nice because you can close it and hold it, and it stays right there. I have my needle file. You get like a dollar from a Hobby Town, which is great, and my scalpel. So let's start. Oh, so the numbers are on the other side. So this is 10A. Wait. <laughs> Hold on, is there multiple tens? This is 11B, and this is 109, 12C. Okay, so the first one we had was the Ripper, that was, the first one we had was the Ripper Dactyl Alpha, it seems, so let's get the head out first. That's 42 and 43, and that's not on that one. Uh, looking for the head, there's 37, 38. So there we go, 42, 43, all the way on this other one. So, get the clippers in there, clip. And, line it up, clip. And this one I'm going to do some shaving on for sure. Clip. And the back of his head, clip. All right. So these pieces are definitely because they actually didn't do that clean of a cut. Actually, I'm actually going to see if I can trim a little bit more. Right there. Uh, uh, there we go. And now just a little trim down. A little thing just to make it smooth. Another thing you can do is you can take a flat edge face scalpel and kind of rub it along. And that should also take off excess as well. It's not the hardest plastic, so it tends to work pretty well. And I'll usually use the file just to smooth that down a little bit if I'm maybe too rough or like dig in too far. And I think the back of the head I'm not going to worry about too much because it's part of the seam. And so the plastic glue we use should melt it pretty nice in. Now I'm going to do again another clip right there on the side. No, it doesn't need too much. I'm going to rub the back of that scalpel on. You don't want to press too hard because then you start like getting rid of the actual like model, not the uh, flash. Is what's going on? So you kind of want to press lightly and just wait till it gets a little bit smoother. It's 
pretty good. And then I'll trim that down again. All right, and it actually tells us to glue that head right away. So let's let's do that. All right, I'm gonna try to get these edges of the seams because. I noticed on one of my models that I built last time, there's a seam line and a pretty obvious point of it. It was, uh, I don't to say upsetting, but it was not what I wanted, so I had to go back and fix it, and that caused me to repaint some areas, which is annoying. So yeah, try to get the plastic glue off your fingers, any excess you want to wipe off. And look at that mean Oop, try and get the camera in there. Look at that mean old face. Har. <laughs> I'm assuming is what they make. The noises they made. They're wicked. They got like a big old underbite. I'm thinking like this chomping stuff. It's like they're cool. They're really nifty. That's why I was like, ah, oh, I got, I gotta do, I gotta do both. I love the pteranodon look, but these reproductors just seem so freaking nifty. All right, now. Uh, the shoulder slash neck part is 39. So I'm looking for 39. There's 13. If we don't get these upside down, let's see. Oh, that's smaller than I thought. Okay, I did find it. It's this piece right there. And little clip. And little clip. All right, this one, a little bit of sanding down should be good. Oh, they built the ton into... The, okay, cool. That's a nifty design. So, they got the head. It's got this hollow little, hollow little part inside of it. You put that through, and where the seam is, the ton's sticking out. That's a good way to do it. Way to go. I mean, that, it always... I mean, it's one of the neat things about this hobby, and it's like seeing how model artists... Oh, come on. You know how the model artist should get these models to fit together. There we go. Twist that in there. So I tell you notice I actually I start to twist in that little like you kind of like rub it in there. So that way you can like start seeing where that line is going to go away. You can push into it to make it, just make it disappear. Because that's, because unfortunately what happens with a paint is that you're going to get these lines show up real obvious. Especially if you like do any dry brushing, the, the dry brushing will catch that edge that was created just from the building the model. And that's not what you want to do. So that's part done. So now let's let's clip out ten. And 13. 13 is like the chest cavity. So I took evolutionary biology in, um, in college. And one of the things you learn about is uh, pterodactyls. Because they have an interesting chest cavity. Um, the way it works, it's very shallow compared to many modern birds. So at least from at least the ones we were looking at and like uh, our professors like asking us hey why would it be like this because what happens is birds on that breastbone right there that's where all the muscles attached to so they got this big old cavernous breastbone i guess part of the wishbone and all that the muscles attached and that's how you get flight power and the way the pterodactyls look it looks like they can't get much flight power so they like, oh and so it comes with theories like oh they're all gliding they can they can't pick up well it causes problems when you're on the ground how the heck do you escape from prey? Like, are they all albatross-like and just, you know, constantly on the fly? And all that. And then you have a, like, oh, then why do they have wings laying on? You have all, you know, whatever you subscribe to, you know, and all that. But, uh, so our professor was like, well, 
what about cartilage? We're like, what are you talking about? Well, it's possible they had a cartilage, cartilage, a breastbone that was more cartilage than bones. So therefore, it would not fossilize and just degrade. Because there are grooves in that area that like, it suggests there might be. So, fun little science fact for those who just, for those tuning in. I'm full of wonderful, I left a little bit more than I really wanted on there, so let me clip that extra. Boom, there we go. There, boom. I can sand that down a lot easier. Because I find what happens is like when you have too much on there, you try to sand it down. And like by, by pure force, you end up getting more than you, getting rid of more than you wanted to. Or if you're not look, watching your file, you end up sand down another area on the model because this is close by. And that can be very annoying. Because I'm not the best with green stuff, so I can't fix many mistakes like that. Alright, so. 13 and that connect like that. Okay. Oh, oh can't get in there, buddy. Okay, I see. So. Definitely see where these seams are going to happen, so let's try to get rid of that. This is a little bit of my older plastic glue, is a little bit wadier, which works out in some ways and doesn't in the others. So it can come out really fast in there. Sorry. All right, cool. All right, so really pressed in there. And like almost no seam line, that's perfect. I see a little bit of this, I'm just going to trim that down, there we go. So you got that rubber body, it's got that wing curved up, and that head's going to go right here. So let's see, I need 44 and 53 now. Alright, so here's 44. I'm guessing because this is the cool tail. Pop. Cut. Cut. Sorry, I'm still getting used to, I have a new camera set up, so hopefully this works out better. But I gotta get used to doing things on the camera so you guys can actually see what's going on because that's the whole point of why you're watching. I mean, I have a beautiful voice, I know. But... You're not going to sit there and just watch empty space that occasionally has a pteranodon in it when you could be watching someone actually put together something. So there's a, I probably could cut that off a little more, but it trimmed down pretty quick. And I'll wipe away that dust just to make sure you can see what you're doing. So like I said, you end up sometimes trimming more than you mean to and you have to like refix that. So there we go, a little trim off with the back of the scalpel. The back of the scalpel sometimes works just as good as a file. Maybe even better because you can kind of feel more of like the bump like when you're trying to get rid of that excess. Alright, so 53 kind of it, is it on the bottom? Is it on top? Or is it in the back? What? It. This is the tail, right? Okay, so, so okay, so it's gonna go like this. Right, so let's get this. It's gonna go like that. All right, we're back. Uh, we had to Google. I say we, me. I had to Google how to do this, and so oh, I had it. Oh, my brain had it. Oh, there we go. It's upside down. So it goes pretty far, it goes, he does have a tail, and it goes like way in the back like, like that. So this is going to be tough, because it's like on top of the rest of the mini. But I see how it goes, so. I'm actually going to line the bottom of this. So that way I don't have excess glue melting the model. I'm going to get some extra glue off. This is an older bottle, so it's kind of prone to gunking up on me. A little bit, just a little nice little line. 
All right. Hands don't fail me now. And then it goes pretty right there, right in there. And now this is like the parts I hate the most. We're just gonna hold it there. It kind of like cements itself. Uh, I had a little on my fingers, but it's okay. You want? I'm not even gonna mess with that like right now, like because I, I had a little on my fingers, so it melts a little bit of it. But I don't. I want that to have a good, solid fit. Oh, I see. I started peeling off. Like, oh, nope. Ow. So guys, always secure your scalpel. Don't let it just roll off the table and hit your shins. All right, there we go. See now it's now it's right on there. Okay, it looks good. It looks like it fits. I'm going to get that scalpel now. Yeah, definitely, definitely <laughs> See, learn from watch my videos to learn from my mistakes, so you don't have to hurt yourself. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna let that dry, but we can still fit and put this piece into, there we go. All right. So again, I'm gonna put glue on the part that's connecting. Again, try to get rid of these seams without losing my little pen thingy. Making like just drawing like an outline mainly. You can connect the butt to the body. Butt to body. There we go. Alright. Ugh. So I'm seeing yeah, I'm seeing those scenes in there. Wiggling in there. Push that in. Push it in. Now we're gonna hold it there because again we want a good uh, so I can move my fingers. We want a good solid non liney connection. Another thing too, actually I think with a small one I could do. So I do a few lines. I'll actually paint along them and like make that into a pattern with the pterodactyl. It's not a bad idea to cover up Sticks. I'm actually put a little of the glue. Come on. Oh, there we go. Glue right there. See that melts down that body just a little bit, creates a better seal, and maybe get rid of those lines. Ow, my ankle is. <laughs> I can't if I drop that on myself. Hey, hey. It's a good lesson to. Be careful with your tools. Always be careful. Like don't cut towards yourself with knives and things like that. Right, so I'm not gonna worry about trimming. I'm just gonna leave it there. Let that dry. We'll work on the head or the neck. So I think the main parts I'm gonna get are like the shoulders and the base of the neck. You want those lines to be gone. The little of the bottom just to secure it. So clasp it by the main body, because if you do buy the tail, you might end up breaking off the tail that you just glued, and that'd be not fun. So wiggle that in there. There we go. He's really, he's, he's really cocking his angle. Cocking his head that way. Alright. So I, yeah, I put that alright. I'm like, I'm looking at the, the picture. And the picture, he's not, his head's not that diagonal. Now, I'm gonna, let me see the completed picture. Oh yeah, I guess. I guess. Yep. 
All right. So now, uh, put this back over. Um, 55, 54, 47, 48. So I'm going to actually take this pretty slow in the sense of uh, 55 is where? 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 Not there. Not there either. I'm oh, we're really mad at this. This, no, this is like a hundred. All right, good. So it's thirty-one, thirty-two. Oh, maybe it was on that piece. I'm just being silly. Now that's 28. No, that's definitely 28. It's 29. <sighs> Go back to the original one where I took the body from. All right, here we go. I found 47. Clip. No, it's all right. Clip. Pops right out. I'm going to take these one at a time because they're directional. Like, this is the right leg, or the left leg. This is the left leg. Trim up that top a little bit. Oh, it's got a little poison. Trim that top. There we go, nice and smooth. Alright. So oh, look at that. Luckily, 47 has like a little notch then. That will make it easier. Oh man, this. I cannot wait for this glue to be gone. But I'm going to be economical and say, and not use just like my good glue just because it flows a little better. When that glue works just fine. So let's go lift. Yep, it's right in there. Perfect. So let that seal. Pull this out a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so now I got 48, which was right next to it. So clip. Oh. Clip. These are mean looking claws. I would not want to be on the other end. I mean, great. I wouldn't want to be eaten by a living, like another creature, anyways. It still sounds it sounds terrifying in some ways. You know, it's like, ah, like, rips you open, disembowels you, kind of stuff. Not good. Not fun way to go, sir. No sorry. Ladies, guys, got all these slashing talons, a giant freaking dagger beak. That's as a. Uh, I've been listening to like these uh, lore videos by Two Plus Tough. He's a. He's kind of helped me understand Age of Sigmar more, which is good because I was very lost on the setting. Oh, oh, see? I say hands. And he said there's a cool dichotomy with Seraphon. You have these innumerable, brilliant slan, which I actually am going to reach over. Here is a slan. He's a very smart, cold, cackling slon with like emotionless, but paired like their armies, the Seraphon armies, are these brutal, savage beasts and lizard men and skinks and Saurus warriors. So it's a nice pairing of cold and cackling with I'm going to ruin your day with utter bestial fury. So now this stuff has been. Right up a bit, I'm gonna start cleaning up some areas I got like glue on it. Make sure the legs are in there, yeah, legs are in there. Tail, I'm gonna clean up the tail a little bit. So these these river dactyls are going back to that concept of savage but smart. These river dactyls are a 
beautiful blunt instrument for that cold calculating slot to remember and like say this is the guy for the job the guys because it comes in a unit of three that's a pretty cool model it's just tearing stuff up right now we need to find put that away 55 and 54 which are little hook claws and I found them this time because I was looking for like like multiple claws and I could not find them so 54 is on this wing over here the claw facing in so we're going to shave that down shave that down make it nice and smooth and so like that. Come on. There we go. Thank you, Blue. Line it up on there. And then we're going to push that right in. Leave it there for a few minutes or <laughs> a few seconds. You guys don't have minutes to watch me just hold something and talk. That would be not so much fun at all. And don't worry, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to go through the alpha. I'll build the other two. And then I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do to the basics. I'm going to do a little bit something different. Alright, so let's get the other one. Which is right down here, 55. Clip. Clip. Shave down. And then another shave down just to make sure it's smooth. And then Oop, a little bit of glue on there, so let's use that. There we go. Oh, I was about to put it in the wrong puff spot. And boom. Fits. Eh, that fits like right in. That's pretty cool. So I'm hold it like there. It forms that bond. Perfect. So that's like the main like dinosaur body of it. Now we're gonna get he's got a little neck piecey thing. Alright. Mm. Sorry, this crushed my toe just a little bit. That's never fun. So we got one and two. Oh yay, that's that's easy. This is his collar. And there we go. So we have one. I'm going to leave that up top because that's the one that's up top. And then two is right here. Drop that and leave that down below because it's the one down below. So let's just, we just scoop this one, so let's shave off the edges just a little bit. Now, some, so I'm going to keep the rider and the the pterodactyl separate for the priming and painting process because it just adds a layer of layer of uh, complexity that I don't want nor need in my life. <laughs> so we'll, we'll glue them together separately. We'll still build the rider, but pieces like this I still glue on because I need to see how it looks on the model. So I also need seven. Oh, I didn't see that part. It's like a little handle. <laughs> Let's see, where is seven? Is this like a tiny piece? It's probably like a tiny. Oh, yeah, it's a freaking tiny piece. Boop. And then, so, very, very small. I very, very, can probably barely even see it in my hands. I'm just going to shave that base down so it's nice and smooth. The handle. So, one is up top. And it's going to go with hooks facing forward like that. 
Oh, and when I did that, I just saw this little edge right here that I didn't clip or shave down. Perfect. So clip it and then file it down a little bit. I'm happy I caught that before I glue it on there. So put a little glue right there. So I, you see how I put some in like the little poke parts because I'm just going to connect oh, connect the two to that hook part. So it's going to go on the neck, plop, and then we're going to, I'm actually going to take the forceps and get this one. Actually, maybe not. All right, so get in there. There we go. Come on, buddy. Come on. I know you don't like your collar. It looks so nice on you, buddy. It looks so nice. I see, I'm kind of using my force of like a hammer. So I'm trying to push it into place. All right, cool. That worked out. And then you put a little dot. It's on this side. All right, so I'll use my left hand. A little dot. I guess that. Goes right there. So I'm gonna take that and kind of rub it in there a little more. There we go. So I think that completes. Yep, the rider or the uh, not the rider, but the Ripper Dactyl Alpha. Mm -hmm monster model and now we're going to get to the rider all right so we're working on the rider now <laughs> and there's my evo chime sorry guys so the rider i think it's 60 62 there's 60. well it's a, like a full body right there so nip I'm definitely going to, have to work on his chin and his back. And I'm going to guess 62. That's 61. Where is 62? Oh, 61 will be part of it. So we'll clip out 61 as well. About 61. And clip out 61. That's his leg. And 62. Oh, I guess it's like the mount part of it, maybe? That's what it kind of looks like. Oh, no, it's his, like, arm holding onto the neck of the... of the Ripper deck. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's got, like, this cool scaly thing going on. Alright, so now we're going to take our file. And the back really did not get... I'm going to actually trim from the other side now. Alright, so tough in there. So now I actually might take a scalpel and use the scalpel edge. Remember, kids, be careful. I say kids, but. Well, and I've seen. I've heard tale of kids playing Warhammer. It's a good game for, like, math. So you add up a bunch of numbers. And like, you know, a lot of cool lore for kids. I mean, who doesn't like dinosaurs riding pterodactyls that eat people? I know I did as a kid. Let me get his chin on it. Get the chin. There we go. Let's file away the chin. Like, I wish I could. Let's, you know, take it a little off. It's a little off the top. It's all or bottom. Get his leg. Any pieces of the leg that I miss. Not the bottom. I'm not too worried about that. This thing Oh, but you know, well, you know what? Not too worried, but worry enough that I'll sh you know, shave it down real quick. Top of the leg, where I pinched, or clip, I should say. And smooth. And now his arm. Ooh, definitely have extra that I can clip off there. Boom. 
Oh, he has like this cool shield or, or armor button. I'm going to put a shield on there. That's annoying. You know what? I'm not going to glue the shield on right away. I did that with my other skinks too because a shield makes it really rough. I'm sorry, I'm looking ahead right now. That's why I'm chatting about this. So let's get 60 and 62. So let's see. That's going to go like... Oh, I see. It's like his peck. Huh. Okay. Let's get some of the excess glue off. Put my fingers together. So this is where it's gonna go. Oh, now it's flowing out real nice. Whatever. So let's see. Let's get that in there. Hold it down. Check up top. Push it a little bit more. Push it in. Very resolute looking skink. And while we're at it, let's do his leg, which actually is a nice little joint right there. Let me place you so you just shove it right in. It looks like I love that when you just shove it right in. It makes it much easier. Alright, now he's kind of doing like the superhero landing. Now we gotta get 75. 75. There we go, right there. It's a cool looking spear. There we go. Sorry guys, I tend to lean back while I do this. So I need to lean forward more. So we got a little bit of edge right there. Let's take it down. down. Rub it down. You don't want to rub too much because you don't want to make the plastic too weak. Should do a little more there because I can see like a mold line on the top of that, which is a little annoying. This is like his back, or his shoulder, I should say. There we go. Put that in there. That's a pretty cool pose. Alright. There we go. He's gonna keep... Let's let that settle a little bit. I don't know. I'm gonna rest that on the. There we go. So you just can't. Sometimes you can do that. You can like rest it on the, uh, on something else to like hold its level without having to do all like the, you know, Mr. Pinchy Man method. So now I'm gonna get to his headdress. His shield. His shield is 81. Okay, I found that. That was relatively easy to find. Oh, I see. And then his headdress. You think this would be easier to find? It's 84. Like, they have the numbers on there, but they don't really go in order of anything. So, like, there's 10 and 14 and 84, 81 on this same thing. So let's look through the other ones. Oh, there it is. I found 84. Lucky me. Alright, right there. Clip. And clip. Okay. Put the headdress there. There's the shield. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna dry fit the shield real quick. See how much of a pain in the butt it will be. Oh, it's oh, it's got like little ridges it fits in. That is gonna be a pain in the butt. So I'm going to leave the shield separate. We're gonna trim some of that down there now. Scab will just take off. See, I just took off that extra. I'm scraping with a sharp edge. Probably not the best idea, but it gets nice and smooth. So now we got the headdress. Scrape it a little bit. 
Use the sharp edge again just to make sure you get a little precise movements. So it's very tiny. There we go. Very small layers. I don't want to shave down too much in fear of chopping something up. So and we'll put this headdress on. You know what? Should probably put that inside the headdress. Let me come on, glue. There we go. So I'm gonna flip that over. And crown the. Master of the Skies, the Alpha Skink of a Rubber Dactyl Unit. Pretty nifty. So there's him. Here's his shield we're going to put on later. And then we have the Rubber Dactyl. So, together, they will kind of look like. Oh, I knocked his, knocked his freaking helmet off. So, the, and I knocked it again. Okay. This is why you are patient while doing this. Push down a little bit more. Alright, so... Alright, let's see how it goes. I'll let this one in. Uh, again. Oh, no, that's like. Anyway, the closest I can get to it right now is like, okay, right about there. That's how, like, how it'll be in the future. That's pretty cool, though. Alright, so there is the Ripper Dactyl on the Alpha. Now, I'm going to work on the rest of the Ripper Dactyl so you guys want to see the whole process. I mean, that's the generic cutting pieces out. I want to take you through every little step. But then I am going to do something different to the bases. And actually, I'm going to do that now so you guys will get to watch. All right, guys, so we work on the bases of the Ripper Dactyls right now. And I'll do them all at once because there's not too many of them. What I brought out here is a few little things to help us out. So when I say help us out, I mean uh, a little help. So we'll be taking a, a hand drill to drill these in because we need to put these pegs in them, these large pegs. And let's so take the middle and oh, 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 loosen it up right there. In the middle, and I'm going to going to drill. Drill, 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 drill. That's be more resistant than I thought. Help! This keeps getting unscrewed for sure. There we go. So that's not the biggest hole. You ain't gonna fit one of these through there. Let's actually all right, break that off. That's fine. You don't really worry about the bottom. See, blurp does not fit. So what we can do. Take your scalpel and kind of twist it around. It's acting like its own little drill. Now, this is probably not the best thing for the scalpel's health, but the thing already hurt me once. I don't really care. And push, fits right in. And then just do a little bit of that. Oops, plastic glue at the bottom to make sure it doesn't fall out a lot. There we go. Now, this is where we run the base of the basic ripper dactyl. So, I don't want to make it too fancy, but I want to make it a little fancy. 
so this is a uh, I have like I said I have a bunch of lizardmen stuff and this is a piece from one of the lizardmen armies. Now I'm thinking like these guys are flying like an old plane, flying over like an old plane. So I'm gonna clip off these feathers. Don't need the feathers. I should clip off these little spikes. I'll shave that down. All right. So now, so take that. Put a bit of glue on the bottom of this guy. Uh, put him and down. It's right in there. And as we wait for that to dry, I'm going to show you guys. So I took it, some of my old green stuff and I'm going to mix it together. Because one of these I'm going to do like an extra special base. So we see how that's in the middle now. This old green stuff is not working out too well. All right, so I had to take a little break to pre pre warm up this green stuff because it apparently takes a lot longer. So here we got the that little guy. He's gonna be on there. And so for the next one, we do something different. So we know that this centerpiece, we could probably drill it out right now. Alright, that was a lot easier. Just had to lose a little more force. And it'll swish it a few times. There we go. Take a look at this other one. Break that piece off. We will trim that down a little bit. Alright, and then we're going to force it in. Perfect. And actually, real quick, we're going to clip the bottoms of these because they're sticking out a little bit. That went somewhere in my garage. I don't know where. Same thing for that one. Oh, that one. Stop. That's fine. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to add this cool snake. This is also another thing from my old Lizardman set. No. There we go. Squirrels. Be like he's sneaking along on the floor. These little snaky guys. Then I'm gonna create. So I got this little clump of green stuff, and uh, apologize to my wife. I'm gonna take my ring off real quick because I wanna rub this green stuff together. And get a long little snake out of it. All right. Now this seems weird. It's like, why am I making a ring? Well, I really am experimenting with my paint techniques. And I just bought this water. Uh, like, acrylic water in a sense. So I'm going to make another puddle. Is it? I know puddles are working. Did one on my other one. If you want to look at my Instagram. It's on there. So I'm going to make that puddle. And now... My force. Uh, let's use the. Uh, no, need if I don't want to get that. Let's use the. Let's go, we're gonna flatten this down. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna use my hands too. Yeah, I wanted a lip, so you, you want that lip. You want it to curve down. And I, like I said, I'm not the best with this stuff. I very little. Some people can like make actual models out of green stuff which is pretty amazing. Like I've seen some people do like Ewoks in Star Wars Legion or like Jawas and out of green stuff. Not like pre printing, out of freaking green stuff. It's amazing. You gotta give those people props because they worked really hard on that. I, I like I made some green stuff feet for one of my Legion things and it worked out okay. <laughs> Not the best thing I could do, but hey, I tried. This thing, you always gotta like challenge yourself. If you don't challenge yourself, you're not gonna get better. You're just gonna either stay where you are, which isn't if you're if you're the best, I guess, and don't and then fine, don't worry about it. But for me, who's nowhere near the best, I'm your average Florida guy 
well, not average Florida man, but like average painter. You know, this is, this is how I get better, by challenging myself, by doing new things. These Seraphon are, like, I haven't done a fancy art before. I've done a lot of sci-fi stuff. I had Tau. I had, uh, I had Tau. And, and I had my, all oh, my Star Wars Legion. So right now I'm just pushing that edge up just to make it so that way when I put this resin stuff in there, I have, like, a decent lip for it to, like, collide with. Because otherwise... It will all spill out, and I wasted 14 bucks. So, I don't want to waste 14 bucks. But actually, a toothpick. Can't we roll out these edges? It really help me push in these ones. Oh, oh. Smack the little around. There we go. All right, hey, it's coming on. The lips coming along. I'm actually, kind of impressed that I'm doing this. It's gonna be a hand cramp, but I'm impressed with myself a little bit. There we go. And for a little piece de resistance, I was thinking of adding. Yeah, let's do it. We're at a skull of a. Actually, I can probably just stick him into the green stuff. We'll do a little on the bottom of this stuff. Yeah. The skull of a, I want to say they're called blood letter. Be a little bit inside of it. There we go. So that, so this guy creates this puddle. And drip, drip, drip. These little puddle drips, and we'll get to that when I do the painting and basing. But I'm doing that basing part. Like I'm getting that done now. This little guy is just gonna be crawling through. Um, and this last little one, we're going to leave relatively plain. We'll have a skull in there at least, but, you know, I have, rock, I have rocks and, and uh, other cool stuff. Oh, I felt something give. There you go, that top piece is coming out. There you go. All right, and then spin, 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 spin. I got some like, green stuff on the scalpel. That's okay. Hobby is a messy one for sure. And you notice I did all like the short, I did all like the short platforms because these guys are gonna get in melee combat. So I kind of want them to be a little more in your face of your enemy. I think it'll look a lot cooler. All I did do is I didn't glue in the bottom part. Right. There, there, there we go. Glue, glue, glue. Glue, 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 glue. Uh, let's just see, get the skull in there. Get the glue on the bottom and sticking down. You want to face it out so that way the detail. And, oh man, what, I could add something else, I guess, but, oh, I have these little, you know what I'll do, maybe these one of these little chameleon guys, I have these little chameleon, guys. oh, dropped him. I think that's another thing I might do, green stuff, like make a rock out of it, and like have him climb out on the rock for somebody. So, those are the bases, and we're not entirely done yet, though. So I'm gonna take this Tamiya plastic model company masking tape. You're like, Sean, what are you gonna do with this? Well, I'm going to cover up these clear plastic ones the best I can. And I'm gonna take my scalpel, 
cut right at the bottom. And you're like, Sean, why would you do that? Well, because I had access. And I messed up my skull, but that's okay. He is easily fixable. Maybe if I get... Ah, oh, it's all the stuff on my fingers. If you ever want to get into hobby, and you, I don't know if you're just watching these for fun without actually being interested in the gaming, good for you. But if you ever get into the hobby, be prepared to lose skin cells, brain cells, of sheer just why, like, why did this happen? Why did it, why did the color turn out like this? Why did I glue my finger to the model by accident? You know, it's, there's so much that goes on with this. It's fun though. It's, it's brain stimulating for sure. This is very, you know, it's unique. Not unique, unique, but like, I always tell people I paint. They're like, oh, you paint canvas, blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, I paint models. And like, oh, that's cool. This <laughs> so maybe not the best conversation starter, but you know, be true to yourself. So I did that. Made it pretty symmetrical around. Like that. Because when I prime, I don't want to get that. Because then I end up priming the stick, and now this looks bad. I did that in the past, and now that I have like the knowledge and where for all to use all these tools, I'm going to. I'm going to avoid my mistake. You know, I'm going to kill the past. Let it die if you have to. Or let go of the past. Let it kill it if you have to. The quote, Kylo Ren. So I'm gonna, I'm not, actually I'm not forgetting, I guess I'm not killing the past because I'm remembering from, I'm learning that hey, find a way to cover up your freaking sticks because it does not look good when you prime something and this looks all, like you have like this beautiful air model and it's connected to this brown, or like black, like for me I primed in black for a lot of my stuff when I learn this mistake. Alright, I'm gonna... Little, I'm, I'm not getting... I'm not getting where I want to go. There we go. Thank you, forceps. See, like, you just... Ah, booger snack. There we go. Use all your tools to make this work. One more tiny little piece. Right at the bottom. I need to put a little more glue on there. You know what? I might use regular glue for this part. Oh, that's that hasn't ever been used. Let's not do that. Let's use the glue that's been used. Help. I'm all sorts of technical difficulties in my glue today. There we go. Get that in there. Leave it on its side. Oh, that one's, that one's doing pretty good. This one over. There we go. Let me reseal this one. And yeah, we'll put that one back on. All right, and then last we'll get that last one, which you guys don't need to see. You see the basic process of it. So I'll come back to you when these guys are all complete. I'll do a little bit of dry fitting, see if they fit in. Well, I don't know if they're going to be able to sit. Well, like this is this will be his. He's the alpha. Um, oh, he kind of sits in there. Okay. No. Oh, oh, oh. So yeah, I'll bring them to you guys when they're all done. All right. So everything is basically done at this point. I had a few looking through the uh, some customization options I think I can do. Then there was a few, oh my goodness, moments where I realized that there was a bases for those, those things. So I had to peel them back up, plant them in, really super glue them in. Uh, so we have that. I had to refix my pond I'm making, little pond I'm making. 
Yeah, it wasn't too bad. And they had a little frog in there. Now, this frog, it's like, why? Why would you have a frog with these pteranodons? Well, these frogs, like, lift, I don't know, like a pheromone or the smell of it, make the ripper dactyls go crazy. And they just tear into anything that's near that smell. So it's kind of a cool little, like, you know, hey, this frog's on the battlefield. Can't be attacked because people don't notice it. And these things just go all over the place. Trying to get to the frog. So now I got a bunch of, uh, did I? Oh, no, he doesn't go on that guy. He goes here. Here's the really hip. So, yep. So, so I got all the ripper dactyls done. There's my two non-alphas. Here's the alpha with the tail. Oh, they're over here. Let me show you guys. To do, to do. Oh, drop things. Ah, oh, more dropping things. I got all the skinks done that are on top of them. All the shields. I'm putting them over here. So I'm gonna basically I'll show you guys the priming process too when I get to it because I have the the skink sarpries, a slan, these ripper dactyls, and I think I'm gonna do a pteranodon unit as well. But it's just gonna be the same setup as like these ripper dactyls, so I'm not gonna show you a whole video of that it's gonna be redundant. Um, but uh, I'm gonna get all that priming done. I'll show you guys how I do it. And I'm gonna have a little double tape and all that kind of stickers. I took it off the snake because he didn't really fit in with those bases. So guys, that's basically it for the unboxing and creating, building together, the Ripper Dactyl unit for, you know, this is the Seraphon. Uh, they're a crazy fun melee unit, kind of like dives in, you know. To me, it epitomizes that, that diving in and attacking with ferocity kind of cool scene in my head when I watch, like, you know, I think of like mass battles and all that, like, the great, if like the Great Eagles and Lord of the Rains had you know, giant claws and, like, giant beaks that could just tear more flesh than they already could and dove into the hordes, hordes of orcs and over and over and over again. And we're driven crazy by frogs. <laughs> but thank you all for coming this journey. I'm going to hopefully get to you guys the video of uh, the priming and then the painting, which I'll include all that in one because it's, it's, priming is a pretty simple process. And the painting, uh, I'll just do, like, one unit. So, guys, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you would, like and subscribe and ring that bell if you want to keep updated. It's going to be Sprite schedule. I'm not doing this for, I'm not doing this to be a big star or gain a lot of money. I'm doing this just kind of for the fun of it and to see how it goes. All right, thank you very much, guys, and have a wonderful day.